don't let him do some savvy romantic sermon for Valentine's Day. <laughs> the other half of you would be like, honey, listen up. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a the third group of you that are just rolling your eyes going, oh my word, paper cut, paper cut, paper cut. <laughs> You get, how many of you have watched that movie? Let's just have an opportunity. <laughs> Perhaps we should have. My wife hates it when I watch that movie. Gabby and I love that movie. I've watched that movie so many times, it's close to memorized. And the great part about watching it with other people is to quote it. <laughs> which which uh, somebody, somebody on Facebook, uh, Scott Riggin actually, one night put on, Good night, sleep well, I'll most likely kill you in the morning. <laughs> your comment. It went for like 30 plus comments of people line after line after line after line. And there's actually Scott and another one. Somebody said, no more rhyming, I mean it. And two people at the same time put anyone down a peanut. <laughs> You beat me. It was fantastic. <laughs> my, wife, my wife hates it because she's not watched it as many times as I have. She's not embraced the anarchy that is Princess Bride. And so I'll be over there in the site quoting lines, and there's nothing that drives my wife more crazy than people talking during movies, especially quoting the lines. And so she threatens all kinds of damage against my horror myself, and it feels bad. So I, I stop. Yeah, it's like karaoke. I, I really think we should do it and just kill the audio and go nuts. You know? <laughs> or even better, perhaps, uh, we should get somebody who's really decent with video and, and just take the script and we can preview the entire movie with cast and experience and create our own. <laughs> but the best part about it is the little boy who reappears randomly throughout the movie. He's the best. And, and I love that line. This is not, this isn't this isn't a kissing book, is it? It's so it's so perfect. And and I thought, you know, how do you get up in front of a bunch of people and talk about Valentine's Day? Because a lot of them are feeling just like him. Yeah, like, oh no, please don't. And and I think that children really have a great grasp on relationships. Um, maybe you've seen this going around the internet, um, and, and heard some of kids uh, kids' reactions to love. Uh, I'd like to share a few with you. Manuel, age eight. I think you're supposed to get shot with an arrow or something, but the rest of it isn't supposed to be so painful. <laughs> May, age 9, says, no one's sure why it happens, it's love, but I've heard it has something to do with how you smell, that's why perfume and deodorant are so popular. <laughs> Tom, age 5, is a little bit of an overachiever, says, once I'm done with kindergarten, I'm going to find me a wife. <laughs> Mike, age 10, has really a great grasp on relationships. I'm a little scared. On the first date, they just tell each other lies, and that usually gets them interested enough for a second date. <laughs> Kenny, age, age seven, some of you are going to just say amen. It gives me a headache to think about that stuff. I'm just a kid. I don't need that kind of trouble. <laughs> Anita, age nine, is a bit cynical, and, and, and again, some of you may be able to relate to this one. Somebody's been dating for a while, the boy might propose to the girl. He says, here, I'll take you for, for a whole life, or at least until we have kids and get divorced. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> 